The significance of representation in video games can't be understated. I've played many games over the years, and every time I get the opportunity to play a character that looks like me, two things come up. One, I'm really freaking happy. And two, I'm really freaking mad that I'm really freaking happy, because that should be a commonplace occurrence. Our next speaker is going to dive into that and show us how the industry can do better. Kayore, or just K, is a mixed race game designer from London, currently teaching game design at Uppsala University in Sweden. He has also worked as a game designer on games such as Affordable Space Adventures and What the Golf. In June 2020, Kay explored the black representation he had grown up with through a series of 30 illustrations of black and black coded characters from media. Now, Kay is exploring the representation of in-game parents and games with custom character creators. All right, let's turn it over to Kay. Hello, uh, welcome to my talk, Racial Bias, Reverse Heredity, and the Parents of Custom Avatars. I'll be talking about the effect that in-game parents can have on the perception of avatars that have been created by the player and the race that they appear to be. My name's Kay, I'm a game designer, lecturer, and artist, and I'm currently working at Uppsala University in Gotland on a small island in Sweden. Um, before that, I was working as a game designer and level designer on some games such as Affordable Space Adventures on the Wii U and What the Golf, uh, which came out a couple of years ago. Uh, last year, during the Black Lives Matter uh, protests, I was stuck on the island in Sweden, so there wasn't really any way I could take part in the protests by uh, going out to a protest. So I decided to uh, do a project where I created illustrations of 30 black characters, one each day of the month of June, um, based on characters that were either black or black coded that I'd grown up with or in media that I'd been watching recently. Um, I ended up creating these 30 characters and they're based on a number of characters that are either uh, positive representations or negative representations. And one thing that I noticed was um, looking at characters for games, there was very few characters to choose from. Um, I, I chose characters from games, animation, and a few live action um, media. But um, I, one of the things I noticed about games was that uh, a lot of the characters that I identified with weren't black. Um, this is represented uh, in a number of studies. There's one by uh, Passmore, Yates, Burke, and Mandrick in uh, 2017, uh, looking at racial diversity in indie games, which is an area of games that you would imagine would be where a lot of diversity was possible um, because sort of Lower, lower budgets and more accessibility for uh, diverse developers, but they're still dominated by uh, white characters. And more recently, um, the Diamond Lobby also did a study uh, based on 100 games between 2017 and 2021. And they saw that 61.2% uh, of characters in games were white and only 38.8% of characters were all other ethnicities combined. So one place you would imagine uh, would be a better place to um, be able to play as diverse characters uh, would be custom avatar creation. So in custom avatar creators, um, they're designed for the player to have as much freedom as possible to create a character that um, is either their fantasy or something that they feel represents them. Um, and even within uh, systems that are built for flexibility, there still seems to be a bias for white avatars. So in uh, Dietrich's paper, Avatars of Whiteness, um, they found that in a, uh, looking at um, 65 MMORPGs and about 20 uh, single-player role-playing games, 
the majority of the characters were uh, lighter skin. There were very few um, African or textured hairstyles available. Um, and the uh, facial features also were prominently uh, Caucasian facial features. And um, in every single game they looked at, uh, white male was the default character option. And so often uh, players of color will end up in a situation where they start to play a game and the closest that they can get to a character that represents them is um, a tanned white character. So uh, there are communities that have done things to combat this. So if you look at the Sims community, there's a group of Sims players known as Black Simmers and they mod the Sims to have um, black hairstyles, darker skin tones, um, different styles, things like that. Um, in a Animal Crossing New Leaf, players were resorting to um, doing a really complicated uh, tanning system that was only available in the summer months between July and September uh, that took five days to get to the darkest skin tone and was only temporary if they wanted to play as a black character. Uh, later on, Nintendo did patch the game, adding um, Wii masks where you could use the Wii character that you'd created. But when they first introduced this, those characters also had uh, white arms. And so if you had a, a black head, it was almost like wearing a blackface mask. Okay. So in uh, World of Warcraft, the recent patch... Uh, or the recent update Shadowlands added um, diverse e ethnicities for the human characters, but it took them 15 years to add these options, despite having fantasy races such as orcs and elves and even cow people. And one of the reasons that was given for this was uh, that it's just the reality of making video games and you have to figure out where to spend your resources. Um, and they decided that creating HD versions of the already white and fantasy races was higher priority than adding different ethnicities for the human characters. A more recent game that has um, been thinking a lot about uh, sort of pushing the technology with um, diverse character options. This isn't a game where you can create your own character, so they have slightly different uh, resources to manage. Um, but in uh, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, they've uh, pushed the technology for making um, textured hair. And so uh, in their video, Polygon talked about um, the technology that was used um, for the PS5 version of the game, which uses procedurally generated curls and um, different levels of detail depending on how far the camera is. Um, and they talk a lot about the uh, difficulties that creating hair textures um, has had, the processing power that's required, and why textured hair is more difficult than straight hair. Um, and this video presents this as if um, this is kind of a great achievement that they've managed to uh, create this textured hair and this and give Miles um, get, getting close to re realistic fade. Um, however, they, in the same video, they also talk about the PS4 version where there's a relatively simple solution for the fade where the uh, geometry of the head is just extruded and uh, there's some opacity added to the texture. And this is something that's been possible to do for many years. And so it's, it, it's interesting that uh, with uh, older games, there's been... Um, sort of stylized and low fidelity straight hair options, um, at, but relatively few textured hair options, despite um, there being a possibility for creating less, uh, creating versions that aren't quite as detailed. And so really now we've got uh, the technology to create realistic fades, but we could have had stylized fades for a long time. Moving on to a game that has very sim simple and stylized hairstyles, um, Pokemon Sun and Moon has a very rudimentary uh, character creation screen. Um, if we go back to the comic that I showed you earlier, 
you can see that it has a little bit of that effect of just having a more and more tanned white character. Um, when I was playing this game, I decided to play as the darkest character, even though it doesn't quite match my skin tone because it was the only one that was unambiguously non-white. Um, and when I met my mother in the game, I was met with <laughs> a strange surprise uh, in that my mother was white. And this actually was a bit of accidental representation. Um, I think the reason the mother was white because the developers hadn't really thought about changing the mother um, based on the skin tone. Um, but I'm half Welsh and half Nigerian. This is a flag that I've created for myself um, kind of because some of the colors happen to match up between those two flags. But I actually have a white mother. And so seeing this accidental representation kind of got me thinking about how uh, parents are represented in games that have character creators and allow you to choose your race. So sort of what choices are made uh, in the design of those and what the implication is on how the players perceive their created avatar. If the player assumed that their avatar was of a certain race and then they meet those parents and uh, can that inform or contradict the potential race that those avatars are um, or are perceived as. And what are the possibilities for mixed race representation in games with uh, in-game parents? So um, going on to the next game in the Pokemon series, Pokemon Sword and Shield, um, the developers obviously saw this problem or maybe uh, fans informed them, I'm not sure, but they addressed the problem by, or oh, well, I don't know if it's a problem, but they addressed the design by um, adding what I've called reverse heredity. So regular heredity is when you uh, pass on biological traits like eye, eye color, skin color, hair color uh, from the, your parents. Uh, they're passed on to the children. And reverse heredity is what I'm calling the phenomenon uh, <laughs> of um, creating a player avatar and having whichever race um, and physical traits you've chosen be passed up to the in-game parents. So another game that has this is Fallout 3. At the start of the game, you see this birth scene and uh, the father character is hidden in shadow and you can just see a little bit of the mother's uh, knee in the corner. And then you're presented with a screen where you can choose the race of your avatar. And so between African-American, Asian, Caucasian, and Hispanic. And the father is then revealed to represent whichever, um, whichever ethnicity you've chosen. Um, interestingly, though, if you look closely at this silhouette, you can actually see that the hair that's used is the one that is uh, from the Caucasian father. So even in this shadowy figure, the default is... Um, Caucasian. And you can see that if you mod the game and turn the camera around, the father is Caucasian. And strangely enough, the mother is always black. Um, the mother dies in this scene and is never seen by the player um, unless you mod the game and turn the camera around. Um, or if you play uh, Fallout New Vegas, there's a photograph of the mother confirming that she is indeed uh, a black character. And so interestingly, from the player's perspective playing the game, they're always the same race as the father. But actually, unless you choose a black character, uh, your character is always a mixed race, but just unknown to the player. So uh, other than modding the game, the two games uh, that I've shown previously have only shown one parent. And so if you have um, the reverse heredity, you can I kind of, as a player, imagine what the other parent will be. So I was wondering what the situation would be like if you have both parents in the game. So in South Park, the fract Fractured Butthole, um, they have a, a sort of comedy version of a, a race selector, which they've mapped to the difficulty selection. Um, that's not what I'm going to be talking about now, but uh, both parents are in this game. And they always map up to the same race as the character that you choose. So here you can see if you choose a dark skin tone, both of your parents have the same skin tone. And if you choose a lighter skin tone, both of the parents have the same skin tone as well. Um, and the implication of this is that uh, 
This particular implementation of reverse heredity assumes that parents always have the same skin tone as uh, the children. And in fact, the entire family is always the same skin tone, which says something about the potential biases of the developers and the type of families that they imagine when they're developing these games. Um, so I wanted to see if there were any other potential ways of tackling this problem. So um, in GTA Online, uh, which is an interesting place to find something like this, but uh, you can they actually have a heritage system where you can cycle through a number of preset grandparents and those grandparents will generate the parents, which will then in turn generate the um, player character or the avatar. Um, another approach is Fallout 4. This is slightly different because you're not actually playing as the child, you're playing as one of the parents, but you, um, when you're choosing the um, gender of the parent, you can um, change both of these parents during the, or both of these characters during the character creation screen. And when you start the game, you play as whichever one's in the front, but the, um, the other character becomes your partner and the child character is generated from however you've created these characters. So that's just um, a few different versions of games where you have parents um, alongside sort of the ability to create characters. Um, so just running down uh, a few of these configurations, in Pokemon Sun and Moon, you always have a white mother and the father's unknown. And so in this case, it's possible to be mixed race um, and it's visible as long as you have a non-white avatar. Um, and it's up to the player to imagine uh, what the father's race would be. Um, it's the opposite in the next Pokemon game where the mother is always the same as the character, so or the um, avatar, so that it's not possible to see that you're uh, sort of visually mixed race, but it, you could still imagine what the race of the father is. Um, in Fallout 3, uh, it's sort of the same configuration as Pokemon Sword and Shield, but interestingly, there is a hidden uh, black mother. So um, that changes something about the reality of the um, mixed race possibilities, although the players wouldn't necessarily know that. Um, in the South Park game, both of the parents are generated, so it's not possible to have a visibly mixed race character. Uh, GTA Online, you have some control in terms of generating the grandparents. Um, and so you can create uh, a mixed race character. And in Fallout 4, um, the parents are both created by the player. So you have quite a lot of control there. But of course, you're not actually playing as the child. So that's a little bit of a different setup. So I mean, this is a small detail. Um, and so um, you might be wondering uh, why we should care about this. Um, and I think it's. Uh, well, I mean, for me, it's personally interesting, of course, because I'm mixed race. And um, and when I played that Pokemon game, I, I realized that I hadn't really seen um, a lot of mixed race representation. And of course, there are many other players who are mixed race other than myself. Um, Avatar creators have the potential to have um, really expanded possibilities of uh, for identification, but there's still a bias there for uh, white male characters. And um, assuming that kids and parents have the same race is a simplification of diversity. And I think it's not something that's, of, of course, it's not something that's kind of uh, spite on the side of the developers, but I think it's just something that they're not really thinking about. It's, um, and of course, it's simpler to generate both parents uh, if you're, Going backwards with heredity, it's difficult to know how you would split split up the um, the genetics in that way. And uh, yeah, and of course, the design of parents has implications for how the player can see themselves uh, in the avatar that they create. So you might create an avatar with an assumption. So for instance, when I was playing the South Park game, I thought I was creating a mixed race character. But then when I saw my parents, I realized that, OK, I, I must uh, be some other race that I hadn't intended. Um, and so in the future, it would be interesting to see um, 
the sort of implications of the this thought out in a few different ways. Um, you could, of course, give the player full control over the whole the whole family, um, like something like The Sims, but of course in a in a sort of narrative based story uh, single player game. Uh, but that, of course, would be quite a lot of uh, development resources and would potentially take a lot of player time as well at the beginning of the game, and they might not want to to do that. So that could potentially be an optional feature. Um, you could create the parents and generate the avatar, so you don't have any control over what your avatar looks like, but uh, sort of creating the parents. So a bit like in Fallout 4, but you play as the child instead of the parents. Um, or you could have randomized parents. Um, so Rust is a game that has um, randomized avatars, and you could do something similar where it wouldn't necessarily match up with um, what you you have yourself, but you could. It would remove the sort of assumption of the entire family being the same race, and it would also be interesting to see other configurations um, such as same-sex parents or um, adopted parents, where the parents are. Um, not necessarily the same race as the children at all, and kind of mix and matching these uh, different options. So, um, yeah, in, in general, I think it's um, kind of interesting. It's also worth thinking about other things that might have influence on how you see your character when you go into the game. So parents, of course, um, have implications about um, sort of the identity of your created character, but other things in the story um, sort of cultural things might crop up as well and would be interesting to look at and how they impact um, a creative feature like a, a custom car custom avatar creator. So that's been my talk. Thank you. Um, I'm on Twitter and I have a website, although I'm not super active there, um, but you can, you can find those uh, if you're interested. So thank you.